Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this section. My name is Elaine Lu. I'm a product manager for Molecular Biology Service at GeneScript. The section today, uh, he, this section will be presented by Dr. Leonardo Pararivas. Dr. Pararivas received his PhD in neuroscience from the University of Utah, and he is currently doing a postdoc training with Dr. Sabo G. Rai at the University of California, San Diego. And his uh, research um, interest is focusing on studying synaptic physiology and the neurodegeneration disease using gene editing strategies. The title of his talk today is CRN-129 Phosphorylation of alpha synuclein is an, is an activity-dependent trigger for physiological protein protein action and synaptic function. So please free, uh, feel free to submit your questions in the question box uh, during the presentation. Dr. Power Rivers will answer them after, after his talk. So um, now let's welcome Dr. Power Rivers to start his presentation now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Leonardo Parra Rivas. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Savoyet Roy Lab at the University of California, San Diego. Before I get started, I would like to thank GeneScript for the invitation to participate in this meeting. Today, I'm going to be telling you about an unexpected finding related to alpha synuclein, and I will introduce some of the tools that we have generated to precisely investigate the function of this protein. Here's the outline for my talk. First, I'll be discussing the physiological role of alpha-synuclein setting 129 phosphorylation. Then I will look in, I will, I will be telling you about alpha-synuclein gene editing. Let's get started. So in normal brain, alpha-synuclein localized to synapses in neurons. So this protein can be associated to synaptic vesicles. Synaptic vesicles are essential for neuronal communication. But what happened in uh, Parkinson's disease and related disorders with alpha-synuclein is that alpha-synuclein gets aggregated in the form of Lewy bodies and Lewy body neurites. Analysis of these, um, of these aggregates have shown that the majority of this protein is phosphorylated in a specific site, which is serin-129. And over 90% of this protein is phosphorylated at this site in Parkinson's disease patients. In contrast, in normal brain, we found only 4% of this phosphorylated alpha-synuclein. This is the main reason why alpha-synuclein serin-129 phosphorylation is considered a pathological hallmark of Parkinson's disease. And the majority of the studies done until now focus this phosphorylation in a pathological context. Let me show you what I have done. So these are immunohistochemistry experiments in mouse wild-type mouse brains. So here I'm showing you a staining for alpha-synuclein. And this staining is nicely synaptic. Every synaptic protein shows the same pattern, BAM2, synapsin, synaptophysin. So alpha-synuclein is not a surprise. It's a synaptic protein. Then we decided to use a specific antibody against phosphorylated alpha-synuclein. And what we found was that there was a specific and restricted expression of serin-129 phosphorylation. We found localization in the olfactory valve, superficial cortex, hippocampus region, and dopaminergic regions, as well as other regions. If we focus a little, bit, a little bit closer in the hippocampal regions, what we can see is that there is nice synaptic staining. But in addition to that, we observe um, localization in the nuclei. Other regions of the brain, like the cortex, also show some localization, both in synapses and then in the nuclei. 
So we are very confident about the specificity of this antibody, mainly because we have done additional experiments um, to dephosphorylate using phosphatases, and then we fully eliminate the, phos the phosphorylate, the, the staining. And this staining looks exactly like alpha-synuclein knockouts stainings. This is specific localization of alpha-synuclein, phosphorylated alpha-synuclein, suggests that might be doing something physiologically. In fact, if we do um, sequence alignments across mammals, we see that this specific uh, site, the setting 129, is highly conserved, supporting this potential idea that uh, the phosphorylation of synuclein plays a physiological role. When we look at the expression of phosphosinuclein in hippocampal cultures, these are hippocampal cultures, um, we see that a phosphosinuclein localized to the, nu nu the nucleus, shown here in magenta, but also localized to synapses. And we see this nice co-localization with a synaptic vesicle marker BAM2. This image is amplified here in the right panel. In the Royal Lab, we combine um, hippocampal cultures with optical probes to examine synaptic vesicle recycling. So the probe that I, we use is called Florin. And fluorine is essentially a pH-sensitive GFP variant. In our case, we target to a synaptic vesicle protein called uh, the vesicular glutamate transporter. And the way that this works is that in acidic conditions, the probe is quenched. This is a synaptic vesicle. And below, I'm showing you a graph with the fluor with um, for fluorescence, OK? So once we stimulate neurons, what happens is that vesicles fuse with the plasma membrane to release neurotransmitters. This probe get dequenched, and then we see an increase in fluorescence due to this change in the pH. And this is showing here in the, in the graph here. This is all after electrical stimulation. Subsequently, vesicles are retrieved, endocytosis happen, and then the probe get quench again. So this is a measurement of endocytosis. Then we add ammonium chloride in our assay, and we see the total pool of, of vesicles. Let me show you a video how this look. So in this assay, we can, using this assay, we can measure the synaptic vesicle recycling. And since we are stimulating, this assay is an activity dependent assay, okay? I wa just want you to keep that in mind. Let me show you the experiment that I have done. So here we have control neurons in which we, we have infected with lentiviruses. This is the recycling that we obtain in white. Then I decide to overexpress alpha-synuclein infected with uh, lentiviruses. And what we observe is that there is a suppression of this recycling, meaning that synuclein is, is working as a negative regulator of neurotransmission. So there is less of these recycling events. This data is consistent with our previous publications, but I'm really interested now in what is happening to this phosphorylated alpha-synuclein in this specific site, the setting 129. From previous studies, we know that converting serine to alanine blocks phosphorylation. So you can create phosphodet mutants. At the same time, you could convert these serines to an aspartic acid to create a mutant that mimics phosphorylation. Using this approach, we, we examine our synaptic recycling assay. And what I found is that when we introduce a mutant that mimics phosphorylation, we observe further suppression of synaptic vesicle recycling. 
On the other hand, if we take our mutant that blocks phosphorylation, setting one to in A, we see no effect in the recycling. This data suggests that setting one to in nine phosphorylation has a physiological role. Since fluorine is an activity dependent assay, we then wonder whether neuronal activity could increase phosphorylation at the setting 129 site. To do this, we, we took two approaches. The first one, we electrically stimulate hippocampal neurons that were played uh, in these multi electrode array plates. And then we use the same paradigms as our fluorine assays to stimulate the neurons. Subsequently, we lyse those neurons and then we run Western blots. As you can see in the right panel, what we found is that after electrical stimulation, there is a dramatic increase in setting 129 phosphorylation. We do not observe changes in the total amounts of synuclein or changes on tubulin. In addition, if you block neurotransmission by using TTX, which is a sodium channel blocker, this effect is not observed. And here is the quantification for that. Essentially, electrical stimulation increase setting 129 phosphorylation. The second approach that we took was to use a pharmacological drug called foraminopyridine, for AP, for short, which is a potassium channel blocker. So we incubate our neurons, hippocampal cultures, with at different time points, and then we lyse them and run Western blots. What we found is that there is a, essentially a time-dependent increase in setting 129 phosphorylation shown, shown in the first panel. There, we did not observe changes in the total amount of synuclein, tubulin, or PLK2, which is the kinase that is in charge of phosphorylating synuclein at this specific site. And here I'm showing you the quantification. Then we decided to test this drug in vivo, and we, using intraperitoneal injections, we observed that the 4-AP drug can enhance the phosphorylation of alpha synuclein. We have looked also is immunohistochemistry, and we have corroborated that this drug that induces increased neuronal activity also uh, in increase the phosphorylation of alpha synuclein at this specific site in vivo. So far, I have tell you four different things. First, that there is a specific and unrestricted expression of setting 129 phosphorylation in the brain. Second, that wild type alpha synuclein can suppress synaptic vesicle recycling. And this recycling can be prevented by introducing, by blocking the phosphorylation of alpha synuclein at this specific site. And finally, that increasing neuronal activity. I mean, neuronal activity can increase setting 129 phosphorylation. But I'm really interested in what is the mechanism behind this. And we know, we know from, um, for studies in, uh, from studies at the, at the synapse that there are other examples in which uh, proteins can modulate protein-protein interactions by uh, changing the phosphorylation state. We thought maybe that could be the case for alpha synuclein. So then we wonder whether uh, we can modulate this, um, the, whether setting 129 phosphorylation can modulate the interaction 
with a specific partner for alpha synuclein. So previously, our lab have found that alpha synuclein can interact with BAM2 and synapsin. And these associations are essential to modulate synaptic vesicle recycling. So the key question is to determine whether the, this phosphorylation, serine 129 phosphorylation, can regulate the association to these two proteins. Towards that, I perform immunoprecipitation experiments in neuro, neuro 2 a cells, which were co-transfected with alpha synuclein and BAM2, and that's showing the left panel. And then alpha synuclein co-transfected with synapsin shown in the right panel. The take-home message from this slide is that we introduce or mutant that blocks phosphorylation, what we observe is a completely elimination of the interaction of synuclein and BAM2, left panel, and synuclein and synapsin in the right panel. And this is quantified at the bottom here. Also notice that it seems that our mutant that increase phosphorylation, the setting 129D mutant, that mimics phosphorylation, pardon, it seems to in enhance the interaction. That's true for BAM2, that also seems to be true for synapsin. To evaluate the interaction of, to evaluate the interaction in a more native context, we purify GST fusion proteins containing our wild type synuclein and the two mutations, the phosphor mimetic mutation and the phosphodet mutant, and then we incubate it with mouse brain license. And then we ask whether native, syn native BAM2 and native synapsin can bind to these proteins. What we found is, once again, having blocking or blocking the phosphorylation of alpha synuclein completely disrupt the interaction with BAM2 and synapsin. And this is quantified here. Once again, we see an enhance in the binding when we have our phosphomimic mutant, suggesting that phosphorylation triggers the association to BAM2 and synapsin. But then the question is how this single phosphorylation event modulate alpha synuclein interaction? So in collaboration with the Rangamani lab at UCSD, we took uh, collab fold structures, and then we create atomic simulations with our artificial bilayers. So these artificial bilayers bi resemble synaptic vesicles, and we have these two conditions. In the left panel, we have an unphosphorylated state, and in the right panel, we have a phosphorylated state. What is pretty, what we found is that in the phosphorylated state, there is a dramatic change in the conformation of the C-terminus of alpha synuclein, which is different to the unphosphorylated state. Let me show you a movie. So these are our simulations. And here you can see clearly this conformational change that is, that is happening at the C-terminus. So in green, I'm labeling serine 129 residue, and in yellow, there are some lysine residues around the C-terminus. So this, um, this phosphorylate, the phosphorylated state appears that in the phosphorylate, phosphorylated state, what, what appears to be happening is that um, the serine 129 residue is in, uh, generating some electrostatic interactions with other lysines. And we think that this uh, conformational change at the C-terminus might be modulating the interaction to BAM2 and synapsin. We have go a step further and we decide to take a look at the ultrastructural level. So we, in, we, we introduce our mutant that blocks phosphorylation in the center. And 
what we observed was like a full dispersion, a complete dispersion of synaptic vesicles. Whereas mutant that, phosphor, that, that mimics phosphorylation have an enhancement in the clustering of these vesicles compared to control conditions. This is a wild type condition. So phosphor, phosphor dead mutant, there is a dispersion of synaptic vesicles. And then our phosphor mimic mutant, we have increasing clustering of vesicles. Based on this data, I have created this model for the function of alpha synuclein setting one to nine phosphorylation. Essentially, what I think is happening is that this phosphorylation function as a molecular switch for the clustering of synaptic vesicles. So I would like to hi highlight the, the findings that so far. First, I told you that setting 129 phosphorylation localization is specific and restricted in the brain. I show you data supporting that blocking setting 129 phosphorylation prevented alpha synuclein induced synaptic vesicle suppression. Then I show you data demonstrating that neuronal activity is able to increase setting 129 phosphorylation both in vitro as well as in vivo. And then this phosphorylation seems to play a key role in the interaction with BAMP2 and synapsin, synapsin, two key synaptic vesicle proteins. And finally, I show you some modeling in which setting 129 phosphorylation appears to induce a conformational change at the C terminus. And once we analyze synapses using electron microscopy, we observe that this phosphorylation seems to play a key role in the clustering of synaptic vesicles. Okay. Now I'm gonna move on to the second part of this talk, which is um, I will be briefly discussing alpha synuclein gene editing. In recent years, alpha synuclein attenuation has evolved as a favorite therapeutic target against Parkinson's disease. The main reasons for that is that um, alpha synuclein aggregation occurs in Parkinson's disease. Also, it's been found that there are duplications and triplications of alpha synuclein gene in familiar Parkinson's disease. Furthermore, there are autosomal dominant mutations of the disease and of alpha synuclein that led to this disease. And finally, there are several GWAS studies across continents that have shown that uh, there are polymorphism in the gene encoding for alpha synuclein, CNCA, which is a risk factor for, alpha for Parkinson's disease. So all these make a very strong argument to use alpha synuclein at attenuation as a therapy for Parkinson's disease. However, if we don't understand the physiological role of this protein, it's pretty likely that these uh, therapies won't, won't function. So an effective therapy effective therapy against Parkinson's disease require a complete understanding of the physiological role of alpha synuclein. So why is it been so hard to figure out the normal function of this protein? So the, one of the main reasons is in the past is the use of uh, animal models. So early studies using alpha synuclein knockouts have shown no phenotypes. And later on, it was discovered that there was some compensation from family members of the synuclein family, like beta synuclein and gamma synuclein. Subsequently, researchers have developed triple knockout mice. However, there is a lot of dysregulation of several synaptic proteins on these animals. 
which makes very hard to provide a clear interpretation about the role of alpha-synuclein in these animals. Because of these complications, we decide to take a different approach. We decide to ge generate uh, crisp CRISPR tools to acutely manipulate alpha-synuclein in hippocampal cultures as well as in vivo. So in the top panel, I'm showing you CRISPR deletions for alpha-synuclein. We have effective guides that can completely eliminate the expression of alpha-synuclein. In the bottom panel, where I'm showing you is CRISPR activation, in which we can specifically activate the expression of synuclein by using this approach. We have also expanded our, our tools to develop um, CRISPRs targeting human alpha-synuclein in collaboration with Fred Gage at Salk. We observe also that these um, manipulations of alpha-synucleins that no affect the expression of beta, gamma-synuclein, and several other synaptic proteins. Using retroorbital AV delivery, we also have shown that we can reduce alpha-synuclein in vivo. Top panel is the, our control experiment, untreated, untreated animals, and then at the bottom panel, we see that we can essentially reduce the expression of alpha-synuclein in vivo. I have been using these tools to provide a deep synaptic function analysis using optical props, electrophysiology, single molecule trafficking, super resolution microscopy, and electron microscopy. I don't have time to discuss the findings, but I would like to tell you that uh, what we have found is that alpha synuclein has a specific functions under different physiological conditions. We hope to, to submit this article pretty soon. With that, I would like to thank first Dr. Suboy Roy, my mentor, and two key persons in, in these two projects. Dr. Kayal Madivanan, who is an expert in fluorine assays and electron microscopy, and Dr. Brent Alston, who together with Donald Piso developed the beautiful Phosphosinuclein stainings. I would like I would like to thank also Frederick Munier from the University of Queensland, uh, who's helping me with the super resolution experiments, and also Dr. Fred Gage at Salk, who is helping me with the human induced neurons. Also, I would like to thank my fu funding sources. And of course, I would like to thank Genescript for, for the reagents using used in these uh, in these studies. So from gene synthesis to all the way to lentivariate production. With that, I would like to take some questions. Thank you. We, uh, let's move on to the live Q&A questions. So um, if, you haven't done, have, if you haven't done so, please enter your questions in the question box. So let's uh, start the, from the start, first question. The first question I got for you is, uh, have you looked at the mechanism of phosphorylated serum 129 localizations? Like, um, it means, I think, uh, also, a, uh, yeah, that means we, what kind of uh, factors or proteins are involved in this localization? So is there any? So if I understand correctly, the question is whether, what are the factors involved in the, this specific localization across the brain or within, neur within the neurons? So there are two, two things. So, um, so we, we definitely see a specific localization across you know, brain stainings. So we, we are actually pursuing um, 
different approaches to, to identify key components that uh, are involved in this uh, specific localization uh, in, in, in the different subset of neurons. The second, um, the, the second uh, uh, part is looking at um, the localization in the nuclei and the synapses. So the, the lo, this specific localization uh, is likely due to, to different uh, transport uh, proteins, but we haven't, we haven't looked in details. So we are very excited about our findings, but in the future experiments, we, we are planning to, to look in, in detail what are those components. What we have identified is that there are uh, key proteins that are involved in the association and the function with synuclein so far. But in the future experiments, we would like to see what are those uh, components that could be uh, helping the transport of synuclein. Okay, thank you. Sounds great. And the second question would be like, uh, um, could a new could the neural uh, activity have a physiological impact on a synuclein serum one twenty one twenty nine phosphorylation? Can you repeat the question again? Sorry, yeah. I got disconnected. Is uh, the second question is could neural activity have a physiological impact on a synuclein serum one twenty nine this phosphorylation? So you have uh, showed that the uh, 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 the serum one twenty nine phosphorylation has a uh, impact on the new <coughs> on the uh, activity, right? It's neural activity. So, uh, so on the other hand, does the neural activity will have effect on the phosphorylation of uh, Zero and 129. Do they affect each other? Uh, I, I, yes, the answer to that question is yes. So what mm -hmm. we see is like if you increase neuronal activity, you see an mm -hmm. uh, effect in phosphorylation. At the same time, uh, after that, uh, we're performing uh, electro EM experiments uh, to show that what happened at the ultrastructural level. And what we see is that when you increase the, the, you do electrical stimulation, you see the dispersion of synaptic vesicles. So it's, it's very likely that uh, the physiological contribution of alpha synuclein phosphorylation and neuronal activity has to do with the dispersion of synaptic vesicles at the synapse and also the way, a way to regulate uh, the f uh, fusion of these vesicles to release neurotransmitters. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Thank you very much. So we have a question. We have time for the last question, uh, which is: uh, Does uh, does the alpha synuclein serum one twenty nine phosphorylation modulate uh, uh, the synuclein protein protein inaction? Does it modulate like directly or indirectly? You think? So we we are confident to say that uh, it, there is a direct modulation of of protein protein interactions. That definitely we we have looked specifically BAM two and synapsin two main in previously described interactors of synuclein, and we see that this phosphorylation impacts the binding of these two proteins. So in addition to that, we have done some proteomics studies. I have shown that, um, I have observed essentially the, there is a completely different pool of proteins that binds synuclein uh, when it's phosphorylated and versus when it's in this unphosphorylated state. So it's definitely a complete signature of proteins. I see. That sounds great. So before we wrap up, uh, do you have any final comments for our audience? So, uh, yeah, well, the, the take home message of my, my presentation is essentially that um, synuclein phosphorylation, which is uh, at this specific site, which it was probably thought to be only a pathological role, we have demonstrated, or I hope I demonstrate that it could be playing a physiological role. In addition, uh, to that, uh, is, I would like to emphasize that it's very important to really understand the physiological role to create therapies uh, against Parkinson's disease, because uh, um, there is a lot of studies currently uh, trying to knock out uh, alpha synuclein, and it's clearly, it's very evident that this protein is essential for synaptic function, as I, I show in my presentation. So I think um, the last call is to to be cautious about these future strategies. So we really need to, to look in detail what are the functions of, the, of these, these specific proteins involving Parkinson's disease to generate better, better uh, uh, strategies to target the disease.
Yeah, thank you very much. That's very cool, Dr. Tar uh, Dr. Tarulis. And I also want to uh, say thank you to our audience for joining us today and for the interesting questions. And thank you and enjoy the rest of the event. And we will see you next year. <laughs>